everyone. Welcome back to my channel, eSpace Stamp Chick. This is Michelle. Thanks so much for joining me today. I have a video for you today uh, using my sketch and guide that I created and I posted on a previous video. This is a free sketch and guide and it's a series that I'm doing called Love in a Dozen and it's five by seven cards. Shows you how to cut up the paper uh, two pieces of 12 by 12 paper and then a various amounts of cardstock to create 12 a dozen 5 by 7 cards and in my first video you can see some of the cards that I made and I will have more cards coming out as well I also had promised in the first video that I would be doing kind of like a tutorial of just showing how to make the cuts and assemble your card and um, I just took way longer to get this done because I don't know if you can tell but my voice doesn't sound 100% we've had um, a lot of smoke in the air and so my allergies have been crazy and I've been kind of waiting to do this video and I finally said I just got to get it done and I feel kind of like my voice is up to it at this point <laughs> so hopefully it is and hopefully it's not too horrible to listen to but um, I've got some water here and if I need to get a drink of water, um, that's fine. Hopefully I don't have to stop the filming to cough or sneeze. But, uh, you know, that's just how it is with allergies sometimes. So this is the handout. It is a free printable, free PDF for you. And it does tell you how much you need and how to cut your paper and gives you a sketch and an example of one of the cards I made and some tips and things in here. This is free. I will link my first video below in the description. So you can go there, you can get your free printable and my I'm hoping to do this every month and hopefully it'll come out around the middle of each month. Um, can't really do the beginning of the month. I have a lot of uh, design team commitments so it would be really hard but to get it out in the middle of the month. Each month would, I think, be doable for me. The hardest part for me is creating the PDF. Making the cards is not hard. Coming up with the idea is not hard. But the computer work, that's the part that I have to learn more. So anyways, this is available. I wanted to show you how to construct some cards and um, brought in my Caterpillar Pro. This is kind of giant and I know it's bright green, but it's my favorite way to cut cardstock and paper. I feel like I get the most um, accurate cuts from this and it's just the easiest and so even though it's kind of big and green and takes up my whole screen, I uh, brought this in so you could see how I cut uh, the paper. And then we will assemble um, a couple of cards. So I have already started, I did a few things in advance so this video wouldn't be like super crazy long. I have all of my bases already cut. This is a five by seven card, which means my base is seven inches this way and 10 inches this way. And it is scored at the five inch mark. And I use for my bases, uh, Michael Michael's Crafts uh, Recollection, Recollections cardstock, the 110 pound. I like a thicker base. Uh, you can use whatever you like. Um, but I'm able to get that easily and I usually have a coupon or there's a sale so I feel like it's a good value. So I use their craft and I've already made 12 which means I've used 12 pieces of cardstock because um, you can't get two out of that like you can with your A2 cards. So those are already made. I also, um, let me bring this back in, I also already did some cutting a little bit. Um, but I want to show you the basics. First of all though, let me show you, I am using two pieces of paper from the Fall Break Pad. This is a Cartabella paper pad. Let me bring that up, paper pack, I guess. So I'm using two pieces and they are double sided and they are a little thicker because Cartabella paper is thicker paper. Um, this particular pack does come with like a sticker sheet and lots of cut aparts, but I won't be using those today. Uh, this is one of the sheets I selected. So we've got some really fun pumpkins on one side, and we've got this really great plaid that I love. And it also has kind of like this aqua color going through. I don't know 
you can kind of see that. I think it's really pretty. And then the other sheet I already cut up, which I probably shouldn't have. I probably, sh probably should have saved it to show you in its entirety, but I was trying to prep and get things done ahead of time so the video wouldn't be, you know, quite as long. Um, so the other one has leaves on one side and these little um, vases with flowers, kind of like a fall mix on the other side. So those are the two sheets. Now, when you're selecting your two sheets, you want to think about um, how the two sides mix because the whole idea of using double-sided paper is that you're going to be able to cut this out and flip the pieces over and make a variety of cards by using different combinations. Now, sometimes I don't do that. I use single-sided paper or I just find that I really only like one side of the paper. And so I make all the cards the same. And that's totally okay. But if you want to have um, a variety, then you want to use the double-sided paper and pick patterns that mix well together. Okay, so something to think about when you're picking your paper. Um, also, I'm going to be using two stamp sets that I've already done some stamping. Um, Incredibly Blessed is the name of this set. And this one is called Give Thanks. And they're both from Sweet and Sassy Stamps. And uh, this one, the Give Thanks, does have a matching die set. So I will be using those for uh, stamping for the sentiment and to embellish. I have already stamped and die cut this uh, little leaf foliage that I thought would be really pretty to embellish the cards with. And I did do it on patterned paper from the same pattern, from the same paper pack. So I thought that would be really fun because obviously the colors will match easily. And, um, you know, it'll give some color to the leaves without me having to sit there and co color 12 of these, you know, which could be a lot. <laughs> um, and then I already stamped, if I can pick these up here, my sentiment square. This is a three inch by three inch square. And I put uh, the pumpkin and the word thanks. So these are gonna be like a thank you card. And then I, my thought was, this will go right across the top. So we'll see how that works out. I did use um, Vintage Photo Distress Oxide and Carved Pumpkin for my stamping. All right, so let's do some cutting. I'm gonna start with the patterned paper. You do have the measurements on here, so if you just wanted to make one card and you don't wanna do a dozen, you totally can but we're going to cut this for a dozen. And so I'm gonna get rid of this branding strip. So we'll get that off. You do wanna be aware of the direction. If you have directional paper, you know, which, which way do you want it to go? One of the things I love about this cutter pillar is that when it cuts, it doesn't leave an edge to the cut line. So it's easy to flip the paper over and use the other side. All right, so we're gonna need four by four squares. I've already cut the other piece of paper, so that gave us six. So we're gonna need another six, four by four squares. So I'm gonna put this at the eight inch mark and cut that. And then cut it again at four inches. This measures 12 inches. So we're going to cut every four, so we'll cut the eight and the four. And now we have four by four squares and we can use either side. So we'll do the same thing. Move this to the eight and cut. Move it to the four and cut. All right, so with what I've already cut out, we've got all of our four by four squares. Okay. Now the next piece is a four by eight piece, four inches by eight, and we need to cut one and three quarter inch strips. Okay. So that's one. So we've got 10 and a quarter is a strip and eight and a half is a strip. 
and six and three quarters, five, three and a quarter, one, one and a half. And this is going to leave you with a small strip of one and a half piece that, you know, we're not going to use. So you could save that for something else. And now you've got your strips, and I already cut my previous strips, okay? So we've got all those. For card stock, on this particular card, I have, I've already cut some, but I'm going to cut some in front of you. We have some layers. I love layers. And so you don't have to do the layers if you don't want to, but we, I like them. So this beige is the outside, is the actual card base. The gold is a layer and the chocolate is a layer on my sketch. So that means I'm going to use this kind of aqua color for the bigger layer. And the bigger layer, layer one, is four and a half by six and a half. So you're only going to get two layers out of a piece of cardstock. So I'm going to put this at six and a half, cut it, and then we're going to do two four and a half pieces. Okay, you're going to need to do six pieces of cardstock like that. So you have all your layers for 12 cards, which I've already done the rest, but that's how you would do that one. The chocolate layer is going to be layer number two, and that one is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So this one, you're going to be able to get three layers out of this piece. If you cut it first on the 11 inch side at six and a quarter, then cut it in half at four and a quarter, that gives you two pieces. This leftover piece, we will cut it at six and a quarter and then trim it down to four and a quarter. And that's your third piece. So let's do that one more time. Turn it to the 11 inch side and we'll cut it at six and a quarter and then four and a quarter. So that gives you two. Then we have one big piece left that we're going to cut at six and a quarter and then four and a quarter. Okay, so I already cut some out. So I now have 12 chocolate layers and 12 of the kind of, I don't know what aqua green, I don't know what that color is, <laughs> but they're going to, you know, layer right on top of each other. Okay, so those are done. Um, next, we need to cut out, I use circles in the sketch, and I use circles on some of my other cards that you can see in my previous video, but also in my directions here, it says you can use squares. If you don't want to do a circle, punch, or die, you can use a square. So that's what I'm doing today. I already cut out the three inch squares, and these are three by three. It takes two pieces of cardstock. So I cut them out on cream, okay, and that is the, in, the center part. So the outside part, I'm going to cut it in, let me pull this out, some craft cardstock. And for this one, I'm just using 65 pound weight. All my uh, mats and layers are just 65 pounds, um, except I think the pattern paper might be a little bit heavier. But otherwise, um, I only like the 110 for the card base. So um, you can see over here, I showed you how to cut what we just did. And then over here shows you to cut the squares, or those could be circles. So this is going to be the layer. And it's going to be 3 and a quarter inch by 3 and a quarter inch squares. So I'm going to line this up. 
get a good looking corner here. Three and a quarter. By three and a quarter. And we're gonna need 12 of these. And so you'll see, it's gonna look, we're gonna layer it just like this, okay? And then we can, my thought was to put the leaf on there. So it takes up some of the space, nice little decoration. Okay, so that gives us three. So we'll do this again, another three and a quarter inch strip. And you might have a different way to cut these that you would like to use. However you want to cut them is fine. Or if you're using 12 by 12 solid sheets of paper, then obviously your cuts are going to be different. Um, but I just kind of assumed most people are probably using cardstock. That's eight and a half by 11. So that gives us six and then we need one more sheet to get another six. So this is a pretty simple um, card to make because a lot of the cuts are really easy. And so it's uh, quick to cut and easy to assemble, which I think is really fun when you want to make a lot of cards. And you want to use up some of your stash. Because I don't know about you, but I have a lot of 12 by 12 paper and I have a lot of cardstock. So I can easily use all this up. All right, I think that's all the cutting. So now, let me get these scraps out of the way. All right. So this is what we're going for. That's the look. Here's our base. And let's put one together. So we're gonna need this kind of green color, a chocolate. And usually what I like to do is I work on a usually a bigger area and I will lay out all my um, card bases. So I'll lay out six or 12 of them at a time and I'll lay everything on top and then I'll take my patterned paper and lay them out and flip things around and see how I want them to look because you can make lots of combinations with these. So this is a combination, right? And so this is gonna go right on top and then I'll put my little leaf and then I'll probably put like maybe some gold sequins to decorate it. So that's one look that we could have, right? We could also do, let's scooch this one over. My um, filming desk is kind of small, so <laughs> I'm trying to work everything around. So here's another layer, right? This is on the back of the pumpkins. So we could do a nice big plaid. And then we could have pumpkins down below. And then it would look like that. So that would be a whole nother look we could do. We could also do, get these. There we go. Let's get this lined up. Okay. So we've done the front and the back of the pumpkins. So here's the fall leaves. So we've got the leaves 
and we could do the vases, right? We could also do, I mean, your combinations, I mean, you get quite a few different combinations. Let me scooch this up a little bit here. There we go. Okay. So another combination is going to be the other side of the leaves, which is the vase. And we could do a pumpkin, or we could do the plaid, or we could do the leaves. So you have so many choices if you're using double-sided paper. And this is what I like to do is just lay them all out. And then I start gluing everything once I get all my um, all my my looks done here so I don't know if I've done that one yet have I no I haven't even done that combination yet <laughs> oh my gosh so see I mean there's just so many combinations you could do right um, and then did we do one with the plaid no, I haven't even done one, one with the plaid yet. Oh my goodness. So. That. There's a leaf. And then there's a plaid. So, I mean, it's just... I think it's just crazy how many you can come up with, right? Just because you have all these different patterned paper. So we we have like the leaf with the vase. We've got the leaf with the plaid. We've got the leaf with the pumpkins. And then I don't want to do like leaf with leaf, but you could. You could do the leaves down here and up there. Um, then we've got the vase. Same thing. We could do the vase with all the different ones. The plaid with all the different ones. Like. It's just tons. Like you could just make so many different ones. So I want to glue this one together though. I think this one is going to be one of my favorites. So let me grab some glue and let's do a finished card. Okay. So I like to use the Barely Arts craft glue. That's what I have in my little bottle here. That's the glue I like. So we're just going to add that to the layer. Try to get that even as we can. And we'll get one card assembled. And then um, you will see on like my Instagram, if you follow me there, or I'll even probably have another video closer to when I'm gonna bring out the next um, card sketch, I'll probably show like exactly what I came up with for um, all my sketches, like all my cards, like do one review video where you can see all the cards I made with this sketch. I think that would be fun because I've made a lot of Christmas cards with it so far and I haven't done fall so that's kind of fun to do the fall so I'm just kind of guesstimating like where I'm where the uh, layers are you know but it's all kind of similar because of the cuts are um, equal but you just basically, you want to make sure that these line up right here. So these edges line up. 
in kind of a similar amount of space. between them. They're not going to always be perfect, but they're going to be pretty similar. All right. So, and you can also change the size like this three by three square. I probably could have made it a little smaller and that would have been fine. And in some of my cards, I did a circle. You could do other shapes. If you wanted to do hearts for Valentine's, um, I have some cards that you'll see in a video that I did a poinsettia instead of the circle. So it was like a stamp and die cut poinsettia. I'm going to add some foam tape. And that's the other thing you can do too is adding foam tape to your cards, you know, gives you dimension and you can choose what you want to pop out. Um, I had thought about even popping out these two squares like this, well, it's a rectangle and a square, and that could be really fun too. So, um, you know, you can kind of choose. That's, you get some freedom with this. Um, the other thing that I want to do is make a card that goes landscape. So I want to do a set of cards that goes this way, because you could totally do something like that instead of having it just this way. You just have to make sure that the print is going the correct direction on your pattern paper. But that's another way you can kind of stretch your sketch to get more out of it. So you can have a more variety of cards. And I know I like to use a lot of foam. <laughs> but I like to just make sure everything's really like secure and, and going to stay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's peel this off. Hopefully it's, it's helpful to you to see me cut the paper and to assemble a card. So please, you know, in the comments, let me know if that helps um, or if there's something else you would want to see that would help you. I'd also love to hear if you're planning to make any five by seven cards and to use the sketch that would be so fun. I'd love to see your cards. And then I'm going to kind of put this right here so it kind of is hanging over the edge. I don't think that's exactly straight. Okay. And then I want to put some foam on my leaf. This was another sheet of patterned paper from the paper pack. And honestly, I didn't really love um, the back of it. So that's why I was like, oh, this is perfect to use because I don't really love it, but I liked the one side. So get all my foam on here. I love the sizing of the 5x7 cards because they're kind of big and I just feel like you really get to see the patterned paper and I don't know about you but some of this patterned paper is just so pretty. I mean they have come out with some really beautiful things and I love being able to see a lot of it in my card and so that's kind of was one of my motivations um, with the pattern paper this is showing Let me cut this I don't want that to show through the die cut okay that's better all right so let's put that right across there and then let's add some sequins I like sequins because they give you a little bit of sparkle a little shine so let's see here where do we want to put these oops kind of all fumbly today 
have those days sometimes where you're just not just kind of fumbly maybe something like that do I need a few more maybe out here so just like a little shine Put a few out here. Okay. So there we go. There's our card. Let me know what you guys think. So it came together pretty quick, right? And I think it looks really cute. I love this orange plaid. That's one of my favorites. So I'm going to, um, off camera, because this is already like around a 30 minute video. I will glue all of these together and I will post photos. Follow me at um, eSpace Stamp Chick on Instagram if you really wanna see like everything I make. And I will link how to get the sketch and cutting guide for you um, in the description box. So you can definitely get that and make some cards. There will be more cards coming and um, so you get to see more things with the same sketch, all right? Thank you so much everyone for joining me today. I hope you all have a great day and I hope you give this a try. And leave me a comment and let me know what you think, all right? Thanks again, bye-bye.